Hello and good afternoon. Today I'm going to tell you in a nutshell about three remarkable women that ruled Poland in the 15th and 16th century. It was quite unusual for a woman to rule in those days. Uh, of course, there were female rulers in the past, but nevertheless, it was quite a rare situation and their achievements uh, in this context are even more special. So, quickly, not to bore you, the first one was called Hedwig, Jadwiga. She came from Hungary. Her father was Louis of Hungary and her mother was Elizabeth of Bosnia. She came from the house of Anjou, Capetian house, that ruled France, actually, so a formidable house, royal house. She came to Poland and became the queen of Poland at the age of 11. 11. 11 years old girl. So, of course, she ruled with her advisors, one can imagine, but apparently she matured very quickly. Nevertheless, she got married quite uh, soon after to a man from Lithuania, a prince from Lithuania, quite below her class, in a way, because he wasn't from a royal house, and on top of that, he wasn't a Christian. So he converted. But that was the idea. Poland and Lithuania became an enormous commonwealth, a united uh, commonwealth of two countries and of course Lithuania slowly became a Christian country thanks to that. She ruled with her husband uh, but had a great political influence. She is very much revered uh, nowadays as one of the greatest monarchs Poland had. She did a lot of good. She became a saint later on. She was canonized in 1997, 1997 by John Paul II. She actually commissioned a very beautiful illuminated manuscript called St. Florian Psalter, which is the first translation of the Book of Psalms into Polish. The manuscript is actually trilingual. I think it's in Polish, uh, Latin and German. She founded loads of schools, uh, hospitals, she renovated uh, plenty of churches and also uh, revitalized with her money and influence the Jagiellonian University, which was funded by Casimir the Great, but because of financial troubles sort of ceased to work. So not only she purchased several buildings for the university, but also after her death, through the sale of her jewelry and precious belongings, they managed to found several faculties. Quite a fascinating woman. And she started so early. And she died actually quite young too, <laughs> so because uh, in chi with childbirth actually there were complications and unfortunately her child died and she died soon after. The next lady was called Bona Sforza, she came from Milan. Uh, she was a little bit later than um, uh, the previous one. Uh, she ruled the country with her husband uh, at the beginning of the fifth, uh, 16th century. 16th century. She came from Milan, from the family called Sforzas, and uh, was a fascinating woman. Uh, she was very influential, both politically and socially. She brought a lot of customs from Italy. Apparently, she brought uh, vegetables, which is <laughs> quite a uh, legend, really, because vegetables were eaten in Poland in the previous centuries already. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, if you look at the bills of the royal court and see how much money was spent by her and her husband on food and what kind of things they ate, you will see clearly that they differed very much. She actually spent a lot of money on food, but the food was quite sophisticated and the portions they ate were much smaller. While the Polish king, apparently, uh, spent uh, slightly less money, but uh, the food was more conservative. Italians didn't like it. Apparently they said Poles ate too much, while Poles laughed at the Italians and they said they are all on a diet, basically. So that was very interesting. Anyway, she uh, imported a lot of oranges, almonds, spices, uh, quite unusual food for the day. And uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, she uh, established a garden, Italian garden, and not just a sort of formal garden in the royal castle, but also vegetable garden. So very interesting woman. And the last lady is called Anne of Jagiellon. Anne of Jagiellon was actually the daughter of Bona uh, from her marriage to Sigismund I. 
Uh, she wasn't very liked by Bona. Uh, Bona probably wanted a son, and she eventually had one, uh, who became the king of Poland, Sigismund Augustus. So poor Anne was sort of left on the side. Apparently she wasn't very pretty, it was very difficult for her to find a husband. There were many suitors, but all said she was either not wealthy enough, which is quite surprising because she wasn't a poor lady, uh, or ugly, <laughs> and basically no one was interested. So it took her basically half a century <laughs> to become Queen of Poland and to find a husband, who was Stefan Batory. And uh, he didn't like her very much either. The marriage was consummated, uh, but that was it. Apparently they spent two or three nights together and then Stefan just gave up and sort of left her alone. She wasn't really a bad monarch, I think she's done quite a lot for Poland, uh, but nevertheless uh, her uh, sort of legacy is slightly, uh, well, not controversial, but uh, with a lot of question marks, and one wonders what is the truth or, or what is just fake news. So, uh, but she was the last one of the Jagiellonian dynasty, unfortunately, and after that we had a completely different house in Poland, the house of Vasa, which came from Sweden. So that was it, 200 uh, or even more, uh, almost 300 of uh, Jagiellons on the throne of Poland. And that was it, unfortunately, because she uh, didn't have any children, as you can imagine, uh, marrying at the age of 53. It was a little bit difficult for her to have a child. And unfortunately, her brother Sigismund Augustus, who didn't like her at all, had no children either. So it was quite a 